Everyone loves superheroes, but more importantly, the interest lies in their superpowers. What if they aren't all that in real life? Greetings guys, my name is Ross and welcome to my discussion as to why you probably wouldn't want a broken superpower. Our first superpower is... Now, I like this power, and as a, as a man who works out a lot, I do hope to become really strong in the future. But in the world of fiction, what's the ceiling? The boring answer is indefinite. Because you have a lot of people like Superman, Invincible, right? Uh, people with an insane amount of strength that could do things that no other human can't. And that's the thing. You're a human, an average Joe, on planet Earth with a constant gravity. You're not going to be lifting planets here, but you will be lifting more than some of the strongest men in real life. Actually, not some, all of the strongest men in real life if you were to possess such an ability. But where would we start? How much can you lift in the first place? Hear me out. It would make sense that to be strong, you would need to lift several times your own body weight with minimal to some effort. So one of the limits could be how much you weigh. So if you're 60 pounds and you have the ability of super strength, then the most you could lift is 300 pounds. That's a five to one strength to weight ratio. Like you're 60 pounds. Dudes who weigh like 200 pounds probably have slightly more trouble lifting tw just twice their body weight, depending on what the lift is, but you get what I'm saying. However, it is common logic that the more you weigh, the more you will be able to lift. The concept that mass moves mass. So you're strong and you weigh less than an eight year old, but you do lift more than 90% of the population. I think that's a great deal. But how would you get stronger? Obviously, you would keep lifting to get your muscles used to the stress and keep gaining weight so your max lifts increase significantly. Do you remember when I mentioned how you would not be able to lift entire planets or anything of similar size for that matter? Well, if you think about it, it's true. Say you wanted to lift Mercury. I didn't pull up the exact number, but I can tell you that it weighs more than anything on Earth. And think about it logically too. You won't reach the planet, you won't find a bench strong enough to hold the weight, and you definitely won't get your muscles used to enough weight for you to even be remotely close to lifting the thing. It sucks to hear, but come on, it's real life. You're strong as hell. On a different note, however, what about other applications for super strength? Like punching or jumping? This is where it gets interesting, at least for me. Say you could punch with the force of 100 newtons. It wouldn't be that much because according to Newton's third law of motion, the 100 newtons would go both would go into both the object that you're hitting and your body since every action has an equal and opposite reaction. According to science, the stronger you get, the more force you should be able to exert over a period of time. But what happens when you get strong enough to punch holes in concrete? How about dense metals? How about entire buildings or mountains? If you want to punch with enough force to hit something and have it crumble before you, you better make sure your body can handle the return force. You can't punch earth hard enough for it to crack and be fine. You can't jump to the moon and expect to be fine, the force will be too much for your body to handle. I've actually watched a bunch of videos that explain this in detail, but you would be reduced to, to powder or something. If all that force went to your body, you, you would explode. It really all depends on how much force you exert in the first place. You can train yourself to endure the exertion, that's pretty much how it works, but it is a pretty good and fun limit to consider. <coughs> Everybody loves like super healing, right? Like, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine, again, Invincible, all with their healing factors that basically make them extremely difficult to be killed. You know, imagine getting shot a bunch of times, getting detonated by a bomb or something, or you could fall off the highest buildings and you'll make it out without a scratch. Actually, yeah, pretty much. All those scars or whatever, I know scars don't heal, but with your healing factor, it'll just leave a mark. You won't really lose a lot of blood. Hopefully. But, like the previous superpower, you're human. You're not an alien breed who got sent off this planet. You're not a mutant that's been in a lab for five years being experimented on by other humans. So it's pretty simple to impose a limit on his power, but maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. For starters, when people normally get hurt, it takes time to heal depending on the injury. Not only that, it takes a lot of energy for the process to maintain itself. 
This is true for external and internal wounds as well. Regenerative capabilities essentially ignore those conditions and allow you to go through things that will kill normal people in an instant. But where's the middle ground? I have an idea. Let's say you can heal whatever injury as long as you have the energy for it. Time doesn't matter because it would make sense for it to correlate with the energy spent healing in the first place. Where would you get the energy? Simple. It, you'd eat a lot and you'd get plenty of sleep. You can drink energy boosts and those would help tremendously, but depending on them is a bad thing in the first place. Hell, it, depending on energy boosts in general is probably a bad thing. The more you get hurt, the more your body will adapt to repairing the damage as fast as possible. Now let me ask this, what happens if your limb gets torn off and you're down two arms? You're armless. Well, let's say that the more you get hurt, the more your body will adapt to repairing the damage as fast as possible. It's like building muscle, but in this concept, you're building your healing factor so that it can save you more effectively and it can save you from more dire situations. That's just for your limbs. What about your brain? You see, with your limbs, it's not that hard. Your, your, uh, your limbs have bones, muscles, nerves. You know, just get the limb back if it's available and you can attach it. This is something I just realized. If your limb did just get incinerated or completely pulverized, your body can probably just heal back the same arm or leg or eye if you can't recover it. Come to think of it, if you did lose your eye, it'd be pretty gross to put it back in. Like all the dirt and stuff, or it'd be on the floor or something. But, sorry, let's get back on track. On, on the subject of your brain, it's a different story. Because the brain is different. You kind of need it to survive. I'm not saying you don't need your other organs to survive. But I'm saying a shot to the heart, or a shot to your kidney, or a shot to your lung would probably all be healed, but your brain, you can't really do much without it. So I think a really creative way of going about it is if your brain were to be severely damaged or exposed to the air, you'd need a hospital, but along with your healing factor, you should be able to survive, although it would take a lot of time and energy like explained before. On the bright side, you could pull up to a bar and run fades with everybody there. Who cares? Gunshots to most of your vitals wouldn't be too detrimental, like I explained. And basic cuts and scars and stuff, e even stabbings, probably wouldn't be able to put you down for long. You're not invulnerable. The superheroes I mentioned aren't invulnerable, even though that's what they've been portrayed as. I don't, I don't really know. You'd still feel the damage. And the damage will probably be on par with the injury you sustained. And I know that you can't die from shock, but you know, your healing factor will probably just help you with that anyways. Regardless, saying no to most forms of damage is kind of nice to have. I know that a lot of us as kids, when we watched Superman and stuff, when we watched Iron Man, we'd like to fly like them. We, we like to zoom like through the air at super high speed no, nothing would stop us right maybe unless you cross some country's borders and invite the wrath of multiple anti-air missiles but that's totally not your biggest worry in fact that's definitely not your biggest worry do you know what g-forces are g-forces are measures of acceleration that inflict the human body whenever gravity acts upon it do you know when pilots fly their jets they experience some amount of g-forces every time they suddenly change altitudes in a short period of time. I just repeated time twice. Give me a break. This is no different from you flying in the air at high speeds and having to change heights every now and then. You'd also have to turn, because obviously. There are four types of g-forces, and obviously all of them apply to the power of flight. Positive G's happen when you go up. Negative G's occur when you go down. Lateral G's are when you turn left and right. And linear G's are when you go in a straight line, which, you know, will probably happen most of the time you're in the air. I don't really imagine everyone, any, anyone flying up into space for like an extended period of time. But 
this is what I meant by when the faster you go, the more forces you will feel on your body. When you change directions, G-forces. When you want to make sharp turn, G-forces. I didn't want to make this too realistic, and yes, this is getting boring by now, but yeah, you would need a lot of energy. Motion needs energy. You know, you won't be tired as hell and still have enough time to fly from one coast to the other. Or enough energy to fly from one coast to the other. So if you want to, like, you want to fly faster? Okay, make sure to eat a lot of carbs or something. Anything with energy. Now, I could say you could train your body to withstand more forces, which you could, but you won't see a major increase after about 8 to 9 Gs, which is the maximum G forces a hu the human body can handle. There are suits that can help you withstand the pressure, but there's no really workaround. No shortcut. And it is an unfair limit, but it makes sense. Let's increase the limit of g-forces that your body can withstand bam there you go you can fly super fast so you can pl probably clear continents in about an hour if you decide to go at top speed perfect you know you can fly up in the air and wave to your parents as they're in an airplane as you guys head to the same destination you might want to watch out for bugs though if you're flying low and planes like i mentioned before you don't really want to be crashing into any of them in fact you'd probably die along with the rest of the attendants and all that you could wear a mask or like a helmet which would help well, whatever let's just keep going do it bitch take the bait pending lawsuits class action for those who aren't familiar with the term telepathy is the ability to communicate between minds it's not that special but it's pretty unique Imagine being a spy from World War II. Like, you, you could be a double or triple agent, you know? Or just, just grab people's, like, thoughts and, and store them. It's cool, isn't it? So the first limit, I would say, is you have to see the person to communicate with their brain. You can't just talk with, you know, the president of Zimbabwe or something without ever having met him before. But what about the distance? Can you effectively establish a mental connection with somebody overseas? I got two ideas for that. Let's say the distance does matter. By that logic, the farther it increases, the weaker the link gets between both of you. It occurs the same with uh, wi like cell phone service and Wi-Fi, y you know? The second idea is the farther the distance, the more you have to concentrate on the person you're communicating with. So, you know, you probably need to make a mental image of them in your head to keep the concentrate to keep the link going moving on to the second limit you can only communicate one person at a time so no you can't exactly recreate a zoom meeting through a cerebral cerebral bridge between you and 15 other people and that's about it i am not mentioning the energy part i think that's something i've i've properly conveyed this entire time so forget about the energy you know i got a pretty cool one what about if you do it too much? You probably get a headache or a migraine. I mean, you are using your brain. You are using mental power to do something. So you'd probably impose a bunch of strain on your head, which does make sense. Cool. Another cool thing would be, what if you died having a mental connection with somebody and they died with you? Hey, listen, I can't come up with anything more, but that's a pretty good thing to top this power off as. Or, I have no idea what I just said. That's a pretty good limit to end this section of. With. To end this section with. God damn. Next. So, for all you anime fans out there, we're gonna talk about Time Stop. I remember when writing this, all, like, all that was going through my head was Jojo, 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 and uh, hear me out. This is also the one where I had a lot of trouble imposing limits because time stop is something incredibly difficult to visualize. Like, there's so much things you have to take into consideration, but look, just, just hear me out, okay? What would it look like when you're not the one stopping it? Like, is everyone affected? How are you affected? Well, for some, for some of those questions, the answer would be not exactly. When time grinds to a halt, people on the outside can't feel it. What I mean by that is, imagine you the person stopping time you're now inside the time stop everybody else they aren't so they won't really feel anything happening but why can't they feel it? i'm gonna be 
genuine with you guys and I'm just gonna throw in a towel and say I have no idea. My first guess is that you step into a plane that everyone else isn't on. Like, it rests on the physical plane of existence, so that's why you can still do whatever you want to do when you decide to pause time. Time for everyone else still goes on, however, but not for you. But who the hell knows what it actually feels like? Fuck it. Let's let's let one condition be that you have a limited amount of time to stop time. Does that sound familiar? I'm sure it does. I'm sorry. Like, you can only be outside of time for some amount of time. Any longer and you could experience something bad. You know what? Screw that you need energy for excuse for this one. Let's bring some actual detrimental effects to your health. If you go longer than you can manage, you might experience difficulty breathing or maintaining your balance. You could probably lose control of how long you can stop time. Drawbacks are numerous this time, huh? I know. But you might be asking, why would it be happening? Because we don't know how time stopping actually works, but given that you are a fragile human with a limited lifespan, there's no way in hell that you'll come out of using this power on effect. If you use it for too long in a small amount of time... Actually, that doesn't make sense because time is stopped. Okay, whatever. If you use it for too long and if you just spam the ability, the actual concept of time will catch up to you and you will age depending on how long you have stopped time for up to that point. The only way to prevent it is to be more cautious of whether or not you need to stop time or something. Cool down. Every time you finish with your session, you, can, you can't you can activate it again depending on how long the stop lasted. So if you lasted, if you stop time for about a minute, it'll probably take you an entire day to refill up the bar, if you know what I'm talking about. This is also good for indicating that you can't stop time forever, otherwise you would just start up the time stop again as soon as the previous session is finished. I think that's all I can come up for with this one. If I say time one more time, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Jesus, Nolan, right for the throat. Teleportation. This is probably the first superpower that most people will think of just because of its applications. Think of the possibilities. You could be the most powerful person on the planet just going off of the access you have to any place on the planet. If this were comics, nothing will, let alone can, stop you from exploring the farthest reaches of the cosmos. But this isn't comics, it's real life. And like I said before, you're an average fucking Joe. You know, you're also somebody who might die from a twofold fall at the wrong angle. But back to the topic, because I don't want to stray. The thing with teleportation is that it's very easy to get killed even though that risk applies to every power talked about so far. Let me explain. You can only travel a certain distance. That's one limit. But what about a cooldown? That coincides with that distance restriction, much like the time stop. The length of the cooldown would last depending on how far you traveled up to a certain point because, you know, the aforementioned distance limit. One really cool limit I've been thinking of is that you would have to see the place before you have access to teleporting to it. Because, you know, teleporting into any top secret military, government, compound, and facilities on a whim would just be a little too broken. But if you wanted to head into, say, the Amazon forest, you're gonna have to be there. What's gonna happen if you decide to wing it? Well, Chances are you'll be merged into a tree, or maybe some unlucky animal, or maybe into a river, which is bad enough in the first place. But here's something scientific to learn, and I did find about it years ago. Remember the distance limit? That's partially why this power in particular can be more fatal than any of the other powers. Buckle up because this may take long and it may or may not be confusing. Earth is on an axis, right? And it's rotating. However, even though it can't be felt, the Earth is rotating pretty fast. Like, a thousand miles per hour fast. Here's the interesting part. Different parts of the Earth move at different speeds to make one full spin. The reason why is because the shape of the Earth is a sphere, though it's not perfect. At both poles, the spin is slower because there is less distance to cover. And for the equator, since there is more distance, the speed is faster because all the points eventually need to make the full spin at the same time. 
if you're confused, imagine two circles and one is smaller than the other. There's a point on both circles that has to make a full trip around their circumferences in the same amount of time. For that to happen, the point on the smaller circle has to move at a slower speed to accommodate for the length of the other circle and the speed of its point, which would be faster. Hopefully, I remember to put a diagram just in case if it's still confusing. The reason why I explained all of this is that if you were to teleport from the North Pole to somewhere near the equator, the change in speed would be massive. You could very well end up as a blood splatter on any object if you're unlucky. That's also why there would be a distance limit so you wouldn't risk dying from something like that. It would also explain the other limit where you need to visit the place first to get a good look at it. You can teleport in a room knowing where everything is to avoid injury. Of course, you're not safe completely since any instant shift in location is bound to carry some momentum due to Earth's rotation. By that I mean you'll probably end up flying a little bit depending on how far you do end up teleporting. So. I don't know, put some mattresses on the wall to cushion your crash or whatever. It wouldn't be a fall since you'll probably be flung horizontally instead of vertically. <laughs> this one is pretty short compared to everything else's. It's invisibility, which is like every pervert's dream and every robber's dream too, actually. Now that I think about it, the only people who would want this power would be to use it to like with bad intent. But it could be fun. You know, there are a couple of ways to go about it when we're talking about limits. Nobody can see you, but that's obvious. But what happens when you turn invisible? Like when you actually turn invisible? Like I said, nobody can see you. You'll still be able to see the outside world. But your physical presence would still be there. You're not intangible, so everybody will be able to hear you, smell you, and yes, touch you. But they can't do anything if you're invisible, so let's keep going. You can be detected, such as with thermal radar, since you still give off heat. I just realized there's like nothing to talk about with this power. Now that I think about it, it's, it's bad. Like, you're not intangible. People, like, you'll still be able to be touched. This isn't like, good to have unless you're a robber or a pervert. Like, somebody could pour paint on you. You, you remember that movie, The Invisible Man, where the main character, uh, she she pours paint over the dude with the invisible suit with the invisibility suit like come on It's over you're exposed You can still trip wires and stuff like this is a horrible superpower If all it does is bypass one of the five senses and it's useless in the grand scheme of things Unless you're a fucking ninja or some crook who knows what he's doing Then the most you'll be using this power force is sneaking into the women's room to have some fun If that's the case just Use the hub, dude. You're not that guy. Something just flew in me! For those who don't know, intangibility does grant invulnerability. For further explanation, everything passes through you and you can pass through anything, so nothing really touches you. You're a ghost, essentially, you know, without the invisibility part. But people can see you. I can't believe I just repeated that twice. Think of Martian Manhunter. Or like Danny Phantom, you know, who can turn intangible at will. There is one caveat though, you can't touch anything like I mentioned before. I'm repeating a lot, sorry. You can't hurt people, pick up objects, etc, but there is, there really is no time restriction. No cooldown, and you can spam it all you want, but you won't be able to do much once you turn. Actually, you know what, how about every time you use this power you risk turning into it permanently? This is a big limit, like something that can stop something from activating a power for good. Like it's a good incentive to not spam it. But imagine that fear, like no more physical contact. You'll die of hunger and stuff and thirst. No food, no water. You can even die from suffocation since the oxygen is passing through your lungs. Can you believe that? Now that I think about it, Teleportation might be gruesome, but this power is right up there. No need for a time restriction. Your survival is your time restriction. You're gonna die if you spend a couple minutes to intangible. I used to think it was just straightforward and boring, but it's still straightforward, but it's pretty much less boring and very, hey, it was very uh surprising to talk about, let's just say the least. Like I said before, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um. If you liked it, then 
like, if you liked it, leave a like. And if you didn't like it, then, hey, you didn't like it. You know, I more power to you. I sounded like I was gonna pass out in the middle of a sentence this entire time. So, hey, I, I wouldn't put it past you. I think that's the same. Regardless, I do tend to make more videos like this, some fun, some serious. Uh, so if you guys want, you, you could do stuff that would make it so you wouldn't miss one of my videos. If you want to subscribe, then go ahead. I don't really care. Uh, leave a comment. I do want to see what other people thought about everything I explained in this topic. And it would be nice to maybe cover it in some other video. So I think that would be pretty fun. All that out of the way, again, thank you so much guys for watching. And I hope you have a good day. See ya.